Coming up, I'm going to be talking about the brand new Captain America trailer, plus also the Acolyte and also Beyblade. But before we go any further, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. Hi everyone, it's Roger here from What's On at DisneyPlus.com. It's time for a quick Disney Plus news roundup. Let's start off with talking about Captain America Brave New World. Um, Disney has released the first teaser trailer for the upcoming film, which is coming out on Valentine's Day in 2025, so February the 14th. We got a very first look at the film. I've um, also got to see our very first look at Red Hulk, aka Thunderbolt Ross. Um, it's a final little thing, he kind of jumps in, and yeah, he's kind of got the shield, so pretty iconic with that. Also kind of leans in more on that kind of spy thriller kind of thing, a political drama with um, sort of Sam talking with the president, which obviously is now um, Harrison Ford. And I just like the fact that something weird's going on, there's something, uh, some undercover stuff going on. Very weird. And I'm liking it. I'm really liking the look of this new film. Um, I, I you know, kind of pulling in on that whole sort of Captain America Winter Soldier vibe. That's kind of what it feels like. But then suddenly then it flipping and then I think we're going to obviously have a big fight off between Red Hulk and Falcon at, or Captain America at some point. But I did like the fact as well that they kind of acknowledged the fact that he isn't um, Steve Rogers, you know, that was one of the lines that Harrison Ford said in it. And then they play on the idea, no, that this is a different version of Captain America with wings and he's flying around. We've also kind of got um, a big monster, the Celestial from Eternals in there. They're kind of finally referencing that. Um, we don't really know too much more about what the story is going to be. Obviously, we'll find out a little bit more nearer the time. I had thought that we might have seen this trailer released during San Diego Comic Con, but they obviously decided to do it a little bit earlier. Um, and I know it did get delayed slightly because of um, the President Biden's um, interview that he did. And obviously over the weekend, it's, yeah, it's just been a, a crazy time for all. But So they probably wouldn't have put it out this week if they hadn't already done so. But I think this film, I think looks good. Some of the CGI and stuff is still a little bit hit and miss. They've, can, they've still got time to tidy a lot of this up. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, I, I enjoyed the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series to see where this go. Plus also just having more stuff with Hulks. I mean, you can't go too wrong with that. But let us know. Are you looking forward to the film? Are you not? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Shifting gears now, let's now talk about Beyblade X, a brand new anime series from Japan, which is going to be coming to Hulu in the United States, and obviously Hulu on Disney+, Plus, but also on Disney+, Plus internationally. Um, this was announced um, last week. This brand new series tells the story of an amateur blader called Robin, who finds himself out of a team when he is ditched by his friends after a crushing defeat. Luckily for him, a chance encounter with a former champion called Jackson leads the two unlikely teammates to to join forces. Beyblade X has already debuted on Disney XD channel in the United States, however it will be going to Hulu and Hulu on Disney Plus and on Disney Plus around the world in batches. They'll be dropping them at different times so they're not kind of doing a weekly release for it. Um, it's also got some different deals happening around the world in terms of different channels have picked it up. But I think this is a great step forward for Disney getting in some of this kind of content anime. It's definitely, I feel, an area where Disney's not so good on it. I mean, they're making shows for um, teenagers and sort of young kids, etc. Sometimes they can sort of, they can't quite hit that quite right. I think anime hits a target audience that sometimes Disney doesn't quite able to hit that isn't Marvel or Star Wars. So I think this one should be a big hit. It's kind of funny seeing Beyblade back. I mean, I remember these things coming out years and years ago and... I think my brother had some, but you know, they had a few, but I don't remember it being a huge thing, but they definitely keep bringing it back. But let us know, you're excited about Beyblade? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Shifting gears now, let's continue to talk about how the Acolyte just still just isn't really pulling in enough viewers. We've had the recent Nielsen results come out and and generally, it hasn't done that well. In the originals chart, it was in the sixth place at 370 million minutes. Now this is drastically behind Bridgerton, which was in at 3,467 million minutes. We're talking 10 times the viewership of Bridgerton. Now, obviously, there are some things we need to take into consideration. Nielsen does take into account all of the episodes. So, obviously, there's three seasons of Bridgerton, and there's only three episodes of Acolyte as of the time of when they do the re reading. So, that is to take into consideration. But generally, viewership is not where it needs to be for the not only the expense of the show. Um, so it's definitely something I think they need to be looking at. We've got the finale coming up tomorrow. How good that's going to do, whether they'll continue to get people coming into the show afterwards, I don't know. 
and then whether or not we even get a second season. I kind of wonder how they're going to wrap it up already. But maybe they do, maybe they're just going to look at it and go, this isn't working. I kind of in some way hope that they do have a second season to kind of just wrap it up. And also maybe try and improve the story and try to salvage this um, show a little bit. Because it is very bumpy. Um, there's been some great episodes and there's been some real bad episodes. Last week's one was, was dreadful. But we're probably going to see probably the Acolytes sitting around this number over the next coming weeks. As each week when Nielsen numbers come out. Fortunately, they're about four to six weeks behind. So, yeah, we're still, we're, we've got weeks and weeks of this data coming out. But, yeah, I'm not sure this show really is hitting where it needs to be. It's way below other Star Wars series. I think it's actually around the same as Andor. Because people didn't really get into that. And that was a fantastic series. Just not a lot of people checked it out. I'm personally at that point now where I think that Disney need to kind of put Star Wars maybe on the back shelf for a little bit. I mean, I know they've got Skeleton Crew filmed. But maybe give us a year. Maybe don't. And they've got Andor as well. Maybe spread them out, you know, one a year and just give us some time. Give us a little bit of time for this stuff. Um, but I don't know. But let us know your thoughts on this. Do you agree? Do you think they should give Star Wars a bit of a break for a bit? Slow it down even more so? Love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Shifting gears now. I just wanted to have a little bit of a talk about Young Woman and the Sea. That's coming to Disney Plus this coming Friday. And I, over the weekend, I got to see it. Disney did send me an early copy to better watch. And I really enjoyed it. It's, it kind of felt a very traditional movie. Something that we don't see so often now. It's very feel-good of empowerment and this kind of thing of D Daisy Ridley plays Tr Trudy who is this swimmer she overcomes measles and you know is having a fight at the very early point of the 19th century of just trying to be just even swim because women were treated very differently it hits the point very 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 much throughout the entire film about how much um, women are mistreated at that time and you know what she had to overcome even just like you know like a scene for example like having weeks and weeks traveling from america to paris to take part in the olympics and the men could train on the deck the women just had to stay in their rooms and so obviously they didn't get to do any training and then when they got to the olympics they didn't do as great because they weren't able to train and they kind of lost the skills things like that and just the whole aspect is a, a really really good movie really enjoyed it heartwarming they don't make films like this it kind of had that disney feel to it that you just don't get now feel good family friendly just a real strong message uh but this message is of reality this is something that actually happened i mean there might have been some embellishments here and there in the story and stuff but it is a a good heartwarming i would say wholesome film that you don't tend to see so much from disney and it's nice to see them doing this kind of stuff these kind of movies Disney likes to make, they are kind of on brand for them. They don't generally make a lot of money. They start releasing them straight to Disney Plus, but this one they're going to be, uh, they released in cinemas for a few weeks, and now it's coming to Disney Plus this coming Friday. But a lovely, lovely film. Definitely check it out when it arrives later this week. Put it on your watch list. Um, do give it a go. It is, it is a fantastic movie, and I hope so many more people watched it. I loved it. I thought it was really, really good. Okay, let's now jump into the question of the day. Danny asks, do you think we could get a movie with more villain origin stories like the Queen Ursula, Jafar, Gaston, and Frollo, and maybe even Shere Khan? Now, I would say probably no. Um, some of those characters as well, I don't necessarily know if they need a origin story. Shere Khan is just a tiger who wants to eat apes. Kind of, I think that, you know, there's not you don't tend to get a lot of good tigers in the jungle that don't want to eat stuff. That's kind of... <laughs> Um, I think like Jafar and stuff. I mean, do we need any origin stories? I would rather they did a brand new original movie. Maybe focus on a brand new villain. And I, I, generally, it always tends to be the other way around with Disney. They tend to have a good person take. I don't know. I just don't think it will work. Um, uh, I think we've kind of had enough maybe prequels. But... I don't know, would you like to see any of these villains? Let me know, Gert. If you've got a good question, um, pop that in as well. Um, I'll answer one for tomorrow's video. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back soon. Laters.